squad's gone. Alright, so here is our station. This is station 16 in Cobb County. Uh, so, first thing I do when I get here is I just look at the rig because it's so beautiful. It's so, it's so beautiful. But, um, yeah, so the first thing I want to do is just to make sure that nothing looks amiss because as a firefighter, the engine is not necessarily my responsibility, but it's my responsibility to know the engine. So, I admired it, and I'm about to put my bags down. So, so the medical bags are my responsibility to check off in the morning. Usually, we'll wait until it was time to clock in, but since nobody's here, it's quiet, I'm just gonna put some gloves on. I'm gonna check off the bags now. So, go over here to the check bag off table. It's not what it's called, but that's what I do here. It is my responsibility to check off the medical bags in the morning. It is the firefighter's job to check off the medical bags in the morning. Most likely, the lowest firefighter on the totem pole. Gotta get my gear out my locker. Send it by the engine, get ready. important part of the morning I have to check the uh, SCBA pack the self-contained breathing apparatus for those who don't know what this means this is what keeps firefighters able to breathe and alive in a fire able to do work able to go to work so I've done a lot of training in this in the past year in recruit school out in the field for the past eight months it's just been uh, it's been an amazing time so I'm gonna check this off For me, three long breaths. That's what I give it, three long breaths. I also heard the pass alarm go off and I'm going to make it go off just to make sure that it's working just in case. God forbid anything goes wrong, this is what'll save my life. Somebody can hear me and find me. talk to the patient some he was in and out of it but the brother um the brother spoke to me in, in more in detail in spanish biceps no, I'm just talking about you. you do get on look at that <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just gained so much weight <laughs>
to be a probationary firefighter at Cobb County it is a great feeling because you know you're with guys that are extremely experienced, that have seen a lot, that have done a lot, that have been in your shoes. Um, the way Cobb's probationary period works, it's um, 18 months from the moment you're hired. Um, so for me, that 18 months will be up in a few months. And um, it's a constant learning experience. That is the best way I can put it. Learning over and over and over every day. And when you float, when you swap, when you do OT, <laughs> When you float and you stay yelling right now, that's what that's what happens here sometimes. Um, when you float and you swap and you do OT, you work under different offices, you work under different circumstances, different stations, you do different things. You might be driving a rescue one day, you might be in the back of the engine another day, um, you might be on the truck another day. Um, and every single time you work under every officer, you learn something new every single day. There's so much experience here, there's so many guys here, man, there's so many people, women, everybody here, and you can just learn from everyone. Um, sometimes it's a lot to deal with, it's a lot to take in, but um, the ability to be able to learn from some people that are so experienced, I believe is a blessing. And it's such a great thing to be able to have here. And everybody here is so open and willing to teach. What's really important from this side is to control the nozzle as soon as you can. Got it. You see that nozzle, reach up there and grab that thing. See that's falling off? Yes, because it wasn't loaded very well. Just pull that left, that thing right there. There you go. You go 15 feet in and come back, I'm good. Right. Okay? I'm not going to be that guy. That's, Don't you go in there. Right. And we're here to save lives. Okay. Okay? Yep. Look and look. Get in there. Take a look around. Get back out. You got it. Um, now, I would prefer like this. So if you had a scenario like this where it's a deck, yeah. I prefer it all to be set up out here. Okay? okay? Reason being, that door burns off, we get a smoke explosion or flash over. You mean as far as dropping a couple in the nozzle? Oh, you right? the nozzle before the deck starts? Yes. But still Stay lined outside. Up, still yeah, you're still just, okay. just back here. Right. right here at the head, right? Okay. I just don't want you masking up underneath here right. where something could happen. flame's going to be pushed okay. down on us. Right. right. If I'm back here, at least I can turn. Right. I'm not getting, I'm not getting burned up or covered in smoke. Right. Okay. So the opens that way, obviously. we are going in that way as far as putting the holes. So right. You want to keep it in there. So typically, if the door opens that way, it's going to open into what? It's going to open if it opens typically, that way. opens towards the wall. Yeah, it's going to open into a wall. Right. So if we go knob to knob, it gives a little bit more room going in. To okay. That's just kind of a general general way to set up. Um, this is still work. It's laid out well. It's not going to kink. You know, this yeah. distance is really a good distance to pull. Right. Um, you saw me overthrow the ladder um, because I've never thrown the 28 foot ladder alone much by myself. So I know how to throw it, but I still have to get the balance correct. And uh, my Lieutenant Kyle, Kyle Williams was able to show me um, a way to throw it. And once you get the ladder up to balance it a specific way, which something I could have done, but I had never seen anybody do it before. So therefore his experience would just obviously help me in a situation that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run into at some point in the field, so. Right in there that we attempt to bag a maneuver. Okay. We're unsuccessful, that's where we want to. 
Every call, I have to write a PCR, full narrative on exactly what happened, what you did, what procedures you performed, and you have to write it in detail. PT is extremely important. The number one killer of firefighters in America is cardiac issues. That means if your body and your heart is not used to getting up to a certain beats per minute, when it does, when you need your heart the most, it could cut out on you. Well, afterwards, after you push it far, it could cut out on you. So getting your body used to getting the BPMs up um, really high uh, will allow your body time to adjust to the climate um, that you're in, the amount of pressure you're putting on your body to be able to more easily circulate the blood throughout your body. So this training is very important. I just got my butt whipped, but um, I'm happy. I didn't expect to gain a family when I got into the fire department, but but I did. And I'm, um, I'm proud of that, I'm happy about that. Well, they're big on training and they're big on um, the uh, the low frequency, high risk situations that we, some of them we worked on um, earlier. Um, I just feel like I'm in a position to learn from these guys so much. I, and being at a busy station, one of the busiest in the county, um, I'm going to gain the experience. I'm going to gain a lot of experience being here, even if it's just for a year that I'm here, even if it's for two years, whatever, whatever amount of time I'm here, um, the opportunity to learn so much from all of these guys, like from the squad. Some of these guys have been on the squad 16, 17, 19 years. My lieutenant has been on 22 years or 21 years. or That's mountains of experience and you run a bunch of calls with those guys you will learn like you literally have no choice but to learn like it, it is a it is a, a great opportunity a great atmosphere um, to be a student and um, I'm just student of the game the fire the fire service that's what I am right now